This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this, this is Tony Pollard from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis Melrose High School, University of Memphis, back in your state. <laughs> what did you know about the Titans growing up? Um... I mean, that was our, that was our team growing up. Is that right? Memphis. Yeah. Who was your guy? Uh, I bet I know who he's going to say. Can I say? No, I want to hear his answer I'm first. Sorry. And then I mean, you can say. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Eddie George. Really? Okay. I was going to guess Chris Johnson. Really? Okay. I would have thought you'd have been a CJ2K fan. I mean, I definitely was a, a CJ2K fan, but I was going more the origin. The original. Yeah. Yeah. You had some options in this free agency period. Why here, why now? Um, I mean, it was, it's home for me. That's another a big reason. And, um, you know, just, just seeing what was going on with the coaching staff, um, just a, a lot of new things going on. Um, just walking around the building, there's a lot of new energy. You can feel it in the building. So it's something that I wanted to be a part of. And being home, it was just made it right. You're a real family guy, right? It's gotta feel good to be mm -hmm. back to being close to your family, they'll be able to come to games, things like that, right? Yeah, definitely. Talk about your family. How many people will be requiring tickets, would you say, <laughs> for every home game? How many tickets are you going to end up having to buy? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I know it's going to be a lot different than, than how it used to be. It's going to chew up that big contract, isn't it? No, nah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going there. Okay, but here's what I want to go with, though. So you're at Melrose and you play with other good players. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't rush for 4,000 yards because you were on a team with a lot of good players. You go to Memphis, Daryl Henderson's there. You have to share with him. You go to Dallas, you learn to share with Ezekiel Elliott. He becomes the guy and, and you're not afraid to do that. Where did that start where you said, listen, I'm, I'm part of a backfield. I'm cool with that. Being the lead guy's great. But I understand that interchangeable and working together and being able to be on the field at the same time is an important part of this. I mean, that's just a part of my mindset, you know, just, just always putting in hard work, believing in hard work to get you wherever you want to be. Um, even if I'm in a position that I don't feel like I should be in, but me knowing what the work that I put in and just over time, eventually it'll, it'll take me where I want to go. So having the opportunity now to be the league guy to be a guy who's going to get a lot of snaps you're going to see the field a lot that's got to be an exciting challenge for you right yeah i mean it's it's fun it's definitely um it's not really new for me because i've been playing football my whole life so you know i've i've pretty much been everywhere you can think of um being a go-to guy um being behind somebody waiting waiting my turn so you know I'm, I'm just ready for the opportunity any chance i get you know to go out there and and help the team, I'm looking forward to it. He had seven kickoff returns for touchdowns when he played at Memphis. It's pretty good. Pretty good. But also, you finished with two more career catches than you had rushes at Memphis. And, and I think that was one of the mysteries of you coming into the NFL, and probably one of the reasons you lasted to, until the fourth round is because people just weren't sure mm -hmm. what you were. Was, do you think that's been something you've had to establish, maybe even dating all the way back to the University of Memphis? I would say definitely coming out of college, that was something that a lot of people weren't sure of because, you know, I had a, a strong running back background just growing up playing sports. But through the past few years, I had started to develop the receiver skills and have a good good asset and, and skills for that. So it was hard for, um, you know, scouts and things like that coming out to judge and see where I would be. So. I feel like that's what really played the big part in it. Do you know Tajay Spears? <laughs> yeah. Are you aware of him, and how do you see the bond between the two of you? Um, I mean, it's going to be a dynamic duo. Um, I talked to him a couple days ago before I got out here, just, just catching up. I remember talking to him before the draft, you know, just, just keeping him positive, keeping um, good energy in his ear, high spirits. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get to work. You know, I'm ready to see what it looks like. How did year. you come to know him before the draft? Um, we played, I played in Memphis, he played two lanes, so right. we used to play each other a lot, and I had been in the league for some time, and he was getting ready to come for the draft, so he had ended up, I think he DM'd me or something, and then we ended up chatting like that. You running backs all are in that club, mm -hmm. and he has a lot of the same skill set that you do. 
I don't know that he's quite as big as you are, but it, it is interesting that the two of you are so similar in, in what you do, and uh, that gives you the chance to be a dynamic dude, doesn't it? Because you're really interchangeable. Definitely. Um, just, just bringing an explosion to the, um, to the team, you know, that, that playmaking ability, uh, that home run threat, you know, having different backs that can do that, you know, it, it only helps. When you're going through the process of free agency and finding a team, when you talk to Brian Callahan and his staff, what was it about this team that you liked so much? I mean, I said earlier, just, just talking to the coaches, you know, seeing all the new coaches in the building and just, you know, just you could feel the energy through the phone that, you know, guys were new at the job and they were ready to get to work. And, you know, they were, you know, they were looking forward to doing their job. It wasn't like they've been doing it 10, 15 years and were burnt out. Like, you could feel the energy on the phone. So that was something that was big for me. And the, the point about what Brian Callahan has done with running backs in Cincinnati, we've played them every year. And whomever they've had in the backfield, they've driven us crazy. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't even name them all because they would run <laughs> these guys in here in different points over the last, you know, four or five years. And their effectiveness in the run game and in the pass game was so good. What do you like about the scheme that helps a running back in particular? I mean, just, just letting your playmakers be themselves, um, getting the playmakers in open space, um, Putting your guys in, in places to you know make the get the most out of them and um, you know just yeah just pretty much all of that together. Tony, it is great to have you here. Been a big fan for a long time and thrilled that you are part of the Tennessee Titans. Can't be more excited to see you and young Mr. Spears work together. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I appreciate, appreciate you having me. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans can fan. Amy Wells said it. <laughs> Kenneth Murray is here, new Titans linebacker. Welcome to Nashville. I appreciate it. Why did you decide to pick the Tennessee Titans? What was it about this team and this organization and this town? It's, I mean, obviously, it's a great place to be. Um, you know, I, I definitely felt like the coaching staff, you know, they, they really wanted me here. Um, and so I think that's, that those two things kind of really went into it. I think it's a really good opportunity. Um, I like the scheme that, that we have here. I think it's going to really showcase my abilities to the best of my ability. So, what about the scheme specifically do you like so much? Uh, it's just uh, it allows the players to play fast and attack. I think that's where I do, do best. Um, you know, my speed is one of my biggest attributes and being able to use that um, and get downhill, um, it's something that is where I'm my best at. So I think that would be really good for us. Throughout your time with the Chargers, your career has seemed to steadily ascend. Your right. numbers get better and better every right. year. And a lot of that is attributed to A, being healthy, right. and B, really working on the fundamentals. At what point did you decide, I got to get back to basics here and really just dig in on the foundation of my game? I, I kind of feel like, you know, um, that was kind of like a constant stable for me. Um, but I definitely felt like this past year um, was just kind of more so just getting back to myself, getting back to being a more confident player. Um, and I feel like that's that's what was seen on film this past year. And so I think, you know, always constantly working on, on getting better every day. Um, but at the same time, you know, playing with that confidence and being able to go out there and do what I do best. Because, you know, when I'm, when I'm confident, when I'm being myself, you know, I feel like I'm one of the best. Some of that confidence has to do with the fact that you trust your body, right? Absolutely. How did you use sort of the recovery and all the rehab that you've been through, but also just time working with trainers, working out in the weight room, that kind of thing, to build that confidence in yourself and what you're able to do? It's a big part. Um, obviously, taking care of your body is something that's extremely big. But, you know, you know, I've had a, a few surgeries um, in my young career. And so being able to navigate myself back and, and work back from those things have have been challenging times, you know, in the moment and um, been challenging sometimes to be able to get back. And so, you know, being able to just get back on my feet, continue to work. Um, and, you know, I feel like I knew the light at the end of the tunnel would, would come. Um, and I, I knew that, you know, it was a journey. And I feel like, you know, going through those things, um, you know, definitely taught me a lot about myself um, and made me a better person and a better player, honestly. Kenneth Murray, when you were coming out of Oklahoma, everybody talked about your freak athletic ability. I mean, right. you've, you've heard about that all along. What about those qualities, or which of those qualities, I should say, have you really been able to harness so far? And which of those qualities do you want to be able to harness more as a Tennessee Titan? I mean, I feel like all of, all of those qualities are really good. Um, 
I think, you know, my speed, um, obviously, is, you know, athletically is something that, that's really good. But, I mean, honestly, I really, I really, re really think my best attribute is just my resiliency. Um, I think, you know, I, I set goals and, and no matter what, you know, I continue to go after them um, and I don't quit. So I think, you know, that's my mindset. I think that's what I'm, that's exactly what I'm looking to bring to this team. Um, it's just a resilient mindset. Somebody that's, that's going to go out there no matter what and get it done. You're a smart guy on the football field, but you're also not afraid of a little bit of contact. Mm -hmm. um, how does that aggressive mentality kind of come into your play? I mean, to me, it's everything. I think I think I wouldn't be a linebacker if I didn't like contact. And so I think that's something that I, I seek. Um, I feel like, you know, especially in, in today's game, it's something that people don't really like. Um, and I think you know, I like doing things that, you know, per se, people may not like. And so I think for me, you know, obviously, you know, loving contact, you know, being being a linebacker, you're in the middle of all. So if you don't love contact, then at the end of the day, you won't be a good linebacker. And so I think for me, um, you know, I just I love being violent. Um, I think football definitely is, is a, a, a way that I um, express myself. And so um, I enjoy, you know, being able to go out there and work at it every day and then, you know, be able to go out there um, and go to war with my guys on Sunday. Sounds like a good thing for a linebacker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Many wonder if coming here gives you an opportunity to maximize your skill as a blitzer. Do you think it does? I do. Um, I, I, I would be lying to you if I said that I... Um, didn't come here because I didn't think that this place would maximize my abilities. Um, I definitely, you know, f you know, felt that vibe from from talking to the coach staff um, and and you know, briefly getting into the scheme a little bit. Um, I think you know we're all on the same page that you know, you know, I I have so much more to to gain, so much more to get into, and I think I think you know I'm excited about that journey. I'm excited about you know chasing that every day. Um, and like I said before, I'm relentless. I won't stop until I reach it. So. Mike, do you have any more X's and O football I don't, questions? Because I'm, I'm about to take a hard Go. left. You are a scuba diver. I am. And I would like to talk about this because yep. you don't see very many people in the NFL, especially big guys, yep. scuba diving. Right. Where did that come from? What made you think, I think scuba diving is for me? Uh, well, it started off with um, I had a procedure and. Uh, 2022, I believe, um, and my surgeon told me that basically, um, you know, I'd be on a scooter for a long time, and basically I had nothing to do, and I'm not the type of person that that does well with not being able to do anything, um, but he did give me one option, and that was swimming, and so I started to swim, um, and I wasn't really that good of a swimmer, and I, I did that for a really, really long time and ended up getting pretty, pretty decent at it. Um, and so I kind of just made it a goal to become a scuba diver. And um, I did that. And then that kind of manifested into like a whole nother thing to where like, you know, ultimately I feel like my dream, like I became a dive master, but I feel like one of the big reasons um, and really the only reason why I became a dive master was because I wanted to, they're like scuba um, charities that basically like help like veterans who like have disabilities and they, they use that stuff to like help with like their PTSD and stuff like that. And so, um, I did like all the training and stuff like that to help them because as I got into like swimming, I started to work with this company. I was just talking about this with somebody else, but I just started with this company called Deep End Fitness, who was like founded by former like special operations guys. And so I kind of got like immersed in that culture. Um, and so I kind of just felt like a calling to be able to like join one of those things and like help them. And so that's kind of like how the scuba journey has like came and took it off which is such an incredible story. Not only are you starting to do something that's unique, right. um, but you found a completely different outlet to use it and use it as a way to help people. Why is helping people something that you're so passionate about? Um, because I feel like that's what we're all called here to do, serve. And so I think, you know, whether it's football, whether it's outside of life, whether it's me at home, I just try to serve the best way I can. And I think that's what I'm called here to do. How so long, I'm sorry. I. I can't deal with you right now. There's scuba diving happening. How long did it take you to learn how to scuba dive? Like, how long is that training process? Um, so I, I guess like the regular open water takes probably about like, it, I mean, it just all depends on your schedule, but I mean, you really could get it done in like three, three weeks um, because you have to take like a rigorous 
class and then um, you have to do like four open water dives and perform like all these skills. Um, but like literally the first day I went for like my first open water like class of anything was like in a pool. So it was like the first time I'd ever like had any type of scuba equipment ever on. And I remember like dropping down into like this like five foot pool and like just breathing off this thing. And I was like, I'm in love. And so like the next day I went and like bought like every piece of equipment that you ever could imagine. <laughs> and then the next week I came back to like my, my first open water. So I had never been in the ocean up to this point. Came back to my first open water dive in California, which is not one water diving. It's very cold. Um, but I had all my own gear and got in the water and like, it was just like love at first sight. And that's just how I got started. What is it about it that you love so much? It's peaceful. Um, it's like, uh, oftentimes people ask, or like when people ask me, it's like being an astronaut, like going to space. Cause I mean, really like the ocean is like going to another another planet because like we obviously are humans, we're supposed to be on land. And so like going down there, you know, being with like other creatures and seeing like the cool like reefs and stuff like that. And then like, that's like, just in California, like if you start talking about like tropical diving, like that's like on a whole nother level where like you can see for like miles and like, I mean, I've heard whales talking under there. I've seen like a bunch of different, like, yeah, it's like amazing. Like it's just so peaceful because like you're just focused on that and like you have nothing else to focus on. So yeah, that's why I like it. All right, Mike, I'm so sorry that I cut you off. I'm fascinated by this, but please, <laughs> welcome Are you back. going to do something with that in your life after football is completed? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I've always said I want to live by water, um, but I, I, I definitely can see myself being like a, a, a scuba instructor um, at some point um, or just doing the dive master thing for a while because I really like just, I don't know if being an instructor may maybe maybe a bit much but like I kind of like where I am as like a dive master because like it's just kind of like being a teacher's assistant like you just you're able to like teach but like it's not like I have like the responsibility of like a whole class and like getting <laughs> making sure they're all safe and stuff like that like I'm able to like teach them how to put their stuff together and like meet cool people but yeah that's that's it there's a lot to Kenneth Murray Oh, that's a couple things. I try to, I try to, <laughs> try to be pretty simple. Scuba diving probably like the most thing that people are Is that like. That's the most out there. Part? Yeah, that's probably like the most the shocker. Out, yeah, that's probably like the most out there thing. But other than that, I'm pretty normal. So violent, big and fast on the field. Absolutely. Off the field, nice guy who likes to help and likes to go scuba diving. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, we've got everything. We yeah. Got everything. One more could you want? We're glad you're here. I appreciate uh, it. We are really glad that you're here and excited that you're a part of the Tennessee Titans. Thanks so much for taking time. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is Lloyd Cushenberry, offensive lineman, now a Tennessee Titan coming over for the Denver Broncos. Should I say offensive lineman just to be formal, or should I just go ahead and say center? Uh, I... I'm okay with center. Either <laughs> way, either one works. Were you hired to be a center specifically? Was uh, that the job? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so let me ask you, when the, the process started, the Tennessee Titans made you a priority from the first second that the legal tampering period began. That's got to be pretty special for an offensive lineman, right? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, they reached out, man, and it was just a great opportunity. Uh, the main factor with Bill Callahan, you know, it's it a great opportunity to get to learn from him. Uh, and his resume speaks for, for itself. So I'm um, excited to be here, man. I can't wait to get to work. What was it that they told you about you and your game that made you that priority, outside of the money, obviously, that made you want to come here and be part of the Titans? Um, you know, they just saw, you know, said they, they saw a lot of great things on, on tape, uh, a lot of things I put on film that, very positive from last year. Um, some of the things I can do with my body, I can fit in pretty in, in a lot of schemes. And uh, Coach Callahan, we just mentioned, uh, you know, there's a lot. Of, it's another level I can get to, and he, he can get me to that level. So I can't wait to get to work. We heard a lot of great things about him, and I'm looking forward to it. The Titans have a new coaching staff, and they have an offensive line that's going under, we'll say, a bit of a facelift, a little revamp. Um, was that situation so appealing to you? Yes, yes. I feel like, um, you know, just wanting something new. You know, they, they reached out and, uh, you know, 
want me to come in and be a leader, uh, be an anchor for this line, and I look forward to it. And I just wanted to come in and show these guys what type of work I am. Uh, I'm not really a big talker. Uh, I just kind of just do my job, and I just want to lead these guys the best, best way I can is by example. As a leader, not being a big talker, being more of a worker, what do you do to kind of motivate the guys around you and really lead them in the right direction, maybe without using your words? It all starts with the work. Um, you know, if they see if you, you're putting in the work day in, day out, they see that from you, um, they're going to they're gonna follow your lead. And, uh, and when I say not a big talker, it's not, I don't have a problem with it. I'd rather just show people what type of person I am, what type of work I am first. And then uh, once I have that, uh, you know, I can lead them in my own way. You are a bigger center. You're listed 6'4", 315. Is that close? Yeah. Okay. In, in playing center at that size, you obviously give any offense a better anchor, which is a great thing. Are there challenges in playing the center position at that size that you're still having to kind of learn all the nuances with? Uh, no, sir. I, I've, I've been playing center since I got to college. So, um, and I feel like I have good mobility, good flexibility, and uh, you know, I, I feel great at center. That's, that's home for me. Uh, I have pretty long arms, so it helps me out inside. So uh, no challenges, uh, but a lot of things I can continue to get better at. At LSU, you were given a lot of credit for the, the leadership behind building the base of what was one of the best college football teams I ever saw. Is there? What did you take from the LSU experience and that leadership into the NFL with Denver that you feel like you're going to be able to grow and expand upon here at Tennessee? Uh, LSU, man, it, it taught me um, what it means to really to have work ethic and uh, the, the things that go into, um, you know, getting to ultimate goal. It's not all about the, the end goal. It's about that process and just enjoying that, uh, embracing that process, the challenges that come with it. And I took that into the league, uh, had some bumps in the road, but every year I continued to get better. Every year I took a step. And that's what I plan to do and continue to do at this level and just take a bigger step moving forward. I want to talk a little bit about the stuff that you do off the field because you're someone who's incredibly involved in the community, did a lot of stuff in Denver. What are you hoping to do here in Nashville to establish yourself? I uh, just want to impact uh, as, as best I can. Anything I can do, um, I love to sign up for any community service events, uh, whether that's helping out kids. I love being around the kids, uh, boys and girls clubs, whether that's passing out food, homeless shelters, uh, anything I can do. Uh, that's something I really took pride in. And, uh, try to do as much as I can in Denver, and I want, definitely want to do that here as well. Why is that something that means so much to you? Uh, from my parents. They just always you know, taught us to have a heart, to give back, and um, you know, don't, don't judge people, don't judge others, and whatever you can do to help, help others in need, just do it. As you get into all of this with the off-season program starting on April the 8th, what do you hope to jump in and do right away with your new team? Uh, just, just get to know some of the guys, uh, you know, them get to know me. And uh, like I mentioned before, just get to work. Uh, I just can't, wait, can't, can't, can't really even describe how, how much it means to be here. And uh, I'm just ready to meet a lot of the guys and, man, just start building this thing. From Do you already on. have guys that you know well on the Titans roster? Uh, I played two years with Arden Key. Um, he college. does all the talking for you. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then a uh, guy we just you know, signed, Sadiq Charles, uh, very close with him, played in college with him, uh, same draft class. He's a year younger than me, uh, from high school class. But, uh, yeah, very close with him and looking forward to, to getting this thing started. Talk to me about Sadiq. He, in Washington, he was largely a guard. What do you feel like he can add, and where do you feel, think that he will compete the best? He can do it all. He, he's he's at snaps at guard tackle. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he took snaps at center. Like he he's a very versatile guy, uh, very athletic. Has some of the biggest calves I ever seen. <laughs> Calf muscles. <Wow. laughs> like you'll see it's pretty soon. But uh, great guy, just a worker, man, grinder. Great personality, and I think he's going to bring a lot to the table for us. There's a huge emphasis here about the culture of the team, especially when you're building something new. What kind of a culture do you see as being the Tennessee Titans? What are you hoping to be a part of? Just hoping to be a part of a, a hard-nosed group that uh, works very hard and uh, loves each other, plays for each other, and uh, just building something special because that's what it takes for those special teams. And, you know, you, you have to be a, a close-knit group, especially up front, and you um, you have to have that good balance of when the 
when to lock in or when to you know have be loose and have fun. And uh, yeah, I just want to build. It's a tough group. Tough group that's that's gonna do whatever it takes to win. Lloyd Cushenberry, when the Titans acquired you, so to speak, during the legal tampering period, it really let everybody in the NFL know this team was serious about its offensive line and serious about free agency. Congratulations, and we're so glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Look who we have here. Cheeto Awuje. Did I, did I get close on the last name? Close, yeah. Okay, well, help me. I was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the face after you. <laughs> I went back to Colorado to look. <laughs> Yeah. Do it again. I was yeah. Like I was, I was here. Sw- I was here. I was here. I was there. I was yeah. I was yeah. I was yeah. Do it again. I was yeah. I was yeah. Yeah, I was there. I was here. I was there. I was yeah. And you don't go by <laughs> Chidobe. People who know me know me, call me that. And uh, But you're Cheeto to most people. Cheeto to most people, yeah. Say it one more time. The whole thing or just the last just name? Just the last name. I was yeah. I was yeah. Yeah, so Chido Bay, I was yeah. Chido Bay, I was yeah. It's very That's pretty. the best yeah. name ever. It's a very pretty name. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, but it you, would. But you're Cheeto. Cheeto. Or Chi. 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 To your friends. Yeah. Chi, what's up? Chi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, you are, uh, so I, oh, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I did. I went back to Colorado to see, to see how it's it was. It's all good. I've got several months to work on it. There you go. I promise mm-hmm. you by the preseason, I'll be back. Say less. We are um, thrilled you're here because we have watched you in Dallas mm-hmm. and we have watched you in Cincinnati. And I mean, you're a guy, you've played out two contracts, Yeah. which tells everyone that you're a player because teams are like, well, you know, he's good enough to stay through contracts. Mm. You you leave Cincinnati to come here. You obviously know Brian Callahan very well. Um, what was it about playing for Coach Callahan here that was so appealing? Well, um, I have a great thirst for like coming to a place and being a part of something special. You know, ever since I was young, I've always I, I didn't like to be you know, on the top team. I wanted to defeat the top team. You know, I wanted to, you know, build something with a group of guys through brotherhood, through culture, and, you know, build something special. You know, I went to Colorado. We're in a great program, and we built something special. Same thing with Cincinnati. We built something special. It's like, that's what I see here. I see an opportunity with people that I'm familiar with, number one, and um, Coach Callahan and everybody. I, I could just see the culture and the energy of Nashville, of the team, you know, really brewing. So I, I get that same feeling that, something special can be built here and I want to be a part of it. Steve Jackson, someone that you've worked with before, how much did that relationship play into your decision to come to A lot, a lot. You know, when we went to the Super Bowl on the Bengals in 2021, uh, Coach Jackson was my corners coach and, you know, my game took a really big leap. And, um, you know, seeing him on the coaching staff get hired here, I was like, okay, that's definitely a spot I want to be at. That familiarity and also um, his competitiveness, you know, he played in the league before as well. And, uh, you know, he was a legend here. So um, I want to just, you know, definitely be a part of something special with people that I know know how to do it. You know, and Coach Callahan, Coach Jackson, and all the other coaches I've met so far, um, I could tell that they know how to do it. So I'm ready to, you know, buy in and, you know, get the ship rolling. That thirst to be on teams that take on the big, the big teams, you know, it, it sounds like a real underdog mentality. Where does that come from? Because I've always been looked at not as good as people that – have the hype or whoever that that may be, you know, in high school, I wasn't, I was a three-star recruit, you know, I wasn't a four or five star, you know, being from Bay Area versus Los Angeles, you know, there's a stigma on that, like, okay, Los Angeles football players are this, but the Bay Area football players may not get as much love, and then go to Colorado, the bottom of the Pac-12, you know, all this stuff is like, I kind of just, I don't know if I chased it or if it, or if I just happened to be in those situations, but I come to love it because, you know, it's like, at the end of the day, the truth gonna come out. You know, like all the headlines, the hype, whatever it may be. When it's time to, you know, put put on pads and compete. You know, there's a special feeling when you were counted out and you do it versus when they expect you to be good. You know. So. Your college coach, Mike McIntyre, who's from here, by the way. Yeah, true. Um, he described you in your time at Colorado as just having an amazing steadiness. He knew that you would do well in whatever you did, even if it wasn't the NFL because you got your degree in business. 
He said, that's who he is. Mm. That's who Cheeto is. He is completely steady. And it feels like that's how you've been through your NFL career. Mm -hmm. Fair? Very fair. I mean, you know, coming from my family, you know, seeing my parents is a great example of that. My big sister and my big brother. Also, you know, Nigerian culture, anything you want to look at. Like, I have a lot of great foundations that have led me to kind of see how to be successful in whatever field I'm in. And, you know, it's been my strength as well. You know, also my faith, of course. But it's been my strength of, like, you know, in any time of hardship or adversity, you know, I have things to fall back on and learn how to, you know, battle through it. What would you be doing if you weren't playing corner in the NFL right now? If I wasn't playing corner in the NFL? Uh, what would you do with that business degree? Yeah, I'd probably own half of America. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no I'm just playing. Uh, no, nah, I'd definitely would be involved with a lot of different things because I'm also creative, you know, so I like things where, you know, I'm able to be creative, like commercial real estate, um, a lot of my friends back home host events, do things with nonprofits, you know, run camps, you know, anything like that, like where, you know, you're able to gather people, create a network of people and let them kind of enjoy themselves or network amongst themselves. You know, there's a value in that. So um, stuff like that, I think I'd definitely be involved in. You said you're a creative guy. How does that creativity kind of manifest itself right now? What do you do to be creative? Um, well, I do have this side business I talked about, Be Afro. So that's the thing that my friends uh, do, you know, where they host events and, you know, stuff like that. And then um, I, I do get in a lot of business meetings with, you know, different individuals that may know a lot more than me, but, you know, I'm able to, you know, learn from them and kind of see how they made their wealth or, you know, their specific field, you know, how they learned in it. So I do that as well. Uh, I like to make music sometimes for fun. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things, like, you know, also graphic design, you know, I like to do that. So there's just a lot of, a lot of things. Yeah, chess, I play a lot of chess. You play I was like, chess? Yeah, two years ago I was the... Uh, He's a serious chess player. Yeah, yeah, I, I play chess, so... Well, two years ago you were what? Uh, well, the NFL had a tournament and I won it. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. hardcore. Yeah, so, yeah, diff I just, you know, I enjoy myself. That's what I was going to ask about. If, if you play chess and then you play in the NFL, the two things really go together in mm -hmm. terms of scheme mm -hmm. and anticipation yeah. and some reaction, but th there's a mental component that has to be beneficial to your NFL career. Most definitely, you know, there's, there's something in chess called pattern recognition. You know, when uh, someone who's at the top of the chess game can recall, you know, a position they've been in on the chessboard from 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or they can even recall other people's games, you know, of, you know, what position they were in and what was the best move, you know? So on the football field, it's the same thing. Like if I'm put in a position um, that I've recognized, I could kind of assume the best move to, to do or to make or um, problem solve, you know, on the fly. And also in the film room, same thing. Like, okay, this team did this formation and and then did this route, okay, but this team lined up in a different formation, but or with a different personnel group, but kind of similar formation and did the same route. You can kind of connect the two. Oh, the offensive coordinator came from this family, you know, stuff like that, that we talk about generally in football, but I think chess helps to identify it quicker, so, yeah. But you ain't just a smart guy. I mean, th that's the thing, is we see, he's not a small individual. No, no. And <laughs> Physicality is part of your game. You were very uh, comfortable in the AFC North yeah. with with what your game is all about. What are you going to bring to this defense, and what are you excited about doing in Denard Wilson's defense? Yeah, I'm excited to just be utilized however they would need me to be utilized. You know, I don't want to promise anything. I think coming onto a new team, I definitely want to earn the respect of my peers, of the coaches, and everybody. So um, I'm not going to step on any toes. I'm just going to try to be myself and, you know, really be that physical guy you talk about, you know, technique, all that stuff, whatever message they want to get across. I want to be another vessel of that. And, you know, I, I'm really excited for this opportunity. I, I don't want to promise anything, but if people know me, then they know me. Put it like that. <laughs> and I'll show the rest. Yeah. One of the things you're really known for is your leadership skills. Mm -hmm. You are you're a guy who can really kind of motivate a group of men. Um, what is your leadership style? What is the way that you really get people going? I'm a... Uh, I'm a brother to brother kind of leader. You know, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not rah rah or like get in front of everybody and, you know, rah rah. If I notice something, 
I could pull someone to the side and talk to them. I like to develop relationships with everybody so that when, when it's time to have that type of talk, we can have that type of talk or they could talk to me even. So I'm a, I'm a person that likes to be really intrapersonal, you know, not necessarily like, oh, this guy is, uh, you know, this way in the locker room, but then in front of the team, he, he talking and doing all, I, I'm not that type of guy, you know, so I try to be the same guy and be consistent, lead by example, but as well as bring a brother along with me. And that's, you know, how I like to get down. Being able to build those relationships must be incredibly helpful, especially within the secondary where you, you got to trust the guys around you yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I think it's a big thing in the secondary. You have five, you know, DBs, six DBs on at the field at one time, you know, we're, we're, we're controlling a lot of, you know, what's happening out there. So um, having that trust and communication throughout the whole secondary is very important. Tony Pollard was your teammate in Dallas briefly. Yeah. What do you know about Tony Pollard from your experience that he's going to bring with you to the Titans? He's explosive, very, very explosive. Um, you know, I remember my first year, 2021, when I left the Cowboys, we're watching, I think the Cowboys versus somebody that they played. It was, it was like the Thursday night game, the opening game of the season. And I was telling everybody that I was watching, I was like, that boy right there, he's, he's the real deal. Like, because, I mean, obviously Zeke at the time was starting and doing all that stuff, and he's really good as well. But I was like, Tony Pollard, that boy is the real deal. And I kept telling them that. And, uh, you know, it's just crazy how life happens, and now we're on the same team again. So really excited for his opportunity as well. Did you make a pre-draft visit here? I did. I thought you I did. did. I, did. I, I did. thought you did. I did, yeah. Um, what do you remember about that at part two? How surreal is it to be back here as a Titan seven years later? It's crazy, man. It's honestly crazy. I remember going into the meal, like the cafeteria, and seeing round tables at oh, the yeah. time. Now it's like kitchen, this, that, all the, you know, all the amenities and everything. Um, I remember the practice field, like meeting with the GM at the time and then looking over at the practice field. Um, that's pretty much all I remember. And then now coming back, my dad has just sent me a picture yesterday with like an old Titans shirt. And I was like, dang, that was from when I visited there before. And he's like, texted the same thing, like, you know, crazy how life works, you know. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm meant to be here. So I'm hopeful, hopeful that, you know, we're able to do big things. Did you think we were going to pick you? Uh, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Because you were in Philadelphia for the draft, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. The first Colorado player ever invited to the draft. This really? Right here. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. See? Ooh, cool. That's really cool. But, yeah, uh, I think I had a good idea. I thought I thought the Titans might since I visited here. But, um, yeah, that's why that's how Gil Brandt got me over there. Because <laughs> I thought, you know, go first round. But I ended up going back home and celebrating with my family anyway. So it was fun. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. Must have, yeah. no, I got, I'm going to try it again. I was A. <laughs> what you yeah. graded that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let her yeah. grade that because she, she, she got I was yay. We'll work on it, Mike. Okay, we'll yeah, practice. yeah, yeah. We'll she could be your coach. Hit me again. I was yeah. I was yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. Nope. No? <laughs> no. We'll no? practice. We'll work Cheeto. on it. Cheeto. 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 Well, there I you know. Go. But, you know, <laughs> you're going to intercept a pass and return it 100 <laughs> yards. I got to say it right. The thing is that people don't realize my name is English, right? But the, the language is Igbo. So it's a, it's Which a different is from language. French? Uh, no, it's Nigerian. Okay, it but, sounds French, right? Right. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I wondered if that came from yeah, yeah. a derivation. So, nah, so um, like it's the Igbo language, which is why it looks like English. And if you were pronounced like English, you'd probably say Chidobi Awuzi. You know? Yeah, Chidobi yeah. Awuzi. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. everybody that's, says that's, it. And that's, yeah. Awuzi is, not, is acceptable to me. It's okay. A, a woozy is acceptable to me, so that's it's not going to be acceptable. Yeah. Not because English in English, that's how you would say my name. And Ebo, I was yeah, I was you know yeah. But you're an NFL player. You got to say the guy's name right. I got two. I got three. You know, it's all good. <laughs> What's your middle name? <laughs> Richard. Oh there come on now, stop! <laughs> you stop! You're lying. Yeah, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Richie. King. Richie. So yeah. you could have been Richie. Richie, Big Richie, King Richard. Whatever we want to see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> We've got to end this. this great. <laughs> yeah. I'm Mike Keith. This is Amy Wells. Richard. This <laughs> is Richard. Richie for Cheeto Awuze. Nope. No? Huh? Oh. Uh, Just say, this is the OTP. Look at the camera and say that. This is the OTP. Where the legends go, everybody knows it's
Zeit.